Welcome back everybody and we are going to finish up this little butcher character. If you followed along we did step by step point by point and it was a doozy. So anytime we do the full body ones it's a little bit harder especially since it is uh, harder to see all the points. So it just takes a little bit more time. So if you guys made it all the way through good job. What we're going to do on this one is we are going to color them and it is going to be a much faster and easier process. So at the end of the last video, we basically filled in all of our solid blacks. What we also did is unite all of our blacks. So this is one big shape at this point in time. And we are going to just go through and ink everything and have some fun. So right now, since we've already done our inking, I am going to duplicate this one out. And I'm going to lock it out for right now. So what we want to do is grab this expanded layer and we are going to be using live paint. Now before we do anything with live paint, we basically need all of our colors. Now on the layer above, while we have you here, basically I can grab all of our black. So notice I'm on this top layer. And at this point I can just color them our dark blue. So now that one is basically done. We are done with that swatch. So notice I've locked everything else out. I am on this bottom layer and this is going to be the one that we are coloring. Method behind the madness is I want all of the line work pretty much all on the top layer all by itself. So that is kind of the thought process. So I'm going to select everything. I'm going to drop down to object. I'm going to go to live paint. Make. I'm going to notice that I deselected right there. So I'm going to click on K. Let's do just seeing our base colors first. Okay, so I'm going to do the shirt. So anything that you think is going to be the same color, this would just be a good time to fill that in. Notice that I'm leaving some darks and some lights on both sides. So I don't want to be super bright with these yet. I'm going to pick this one and I might, and this is going to be for the face, and I have a feeling I'm going to add a lighter one. This will go inside of the mouth. This will also go tongue. Let's grab our lights. This will go for the hand. Okay, so I'm going to double click. So we're going to basically add on a few more things. So I'm going to go white. Get out. Let's just do white for that. So I'm doing white for the, the blade. I'm going to do white for the eyeballs right now. White for the eyeball. White for the teeth. So even if you think it's going to be white, just fill it in for right now. I think I'm going to keep the, let's fill this guy in black. Just seeing if I miss anything that looks good. So I'm going to click it. I'm going to go object expand. And the key number is usually three. So I want to ungroup this three times. One, two, three, one, two, three. And that's just so we can grab each part separately. So that is what we are looking for. All right. So we already have all of the darks really on this top layer. So we don't necessarily need them all on this layer, but I'm still going to keep them. I am okay with that. Interesting. Okay. Method behind the madness. Let's just hide this top one for right now. I want to keep this one and then we're going to break it apart. So I want to keep this one, duplicate it. I'm just going to hide that for right now. And then now we can basically have some fun with it. So I'm going to do my magic wand. I'm going to select all of the darks. And then I should just be able to click delete. And then most of that is going to be deleted. So I really just want, I can delete that for right now. So I still have my shape right here. So this is so when we start to fill in and do all of our shadows, that we're just dealing with that shape. So this is going to be our shadow layer. I'm going to duplicate it. 
This is going to be our gradient layer. So on the gradient layer, I'm going to lock it out right now and then hide it. Don't worry, everything is still there. Let's do this. So I can still see it because we're going to start hacking out our shadows. So notice that I have my shadow layer selected. Everything else is locked out. All right, so I think we're going to have our light source coming from the upper left-hand corner. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do all of our, let's do our shirt. Let's just zoom in so you guys can see it. Now, under our eraser is our knife tool. Now, this is going to be the one that we're going to be using today. I think it is a nice little tool, and this is how easy it is. We do not need to be using the Pathfinder. Since we've already filled in with the live paint, we have a shape. It's in the exact shape we want, and now we just have to select it. Again, we are on the shadow layer, by the way. And so I'm going to go right through, and I want to see if I can aim into that armpit. So as I do this, I will explain what the thought process is here. I'm going to go all the way through the shape. And I'm going to go all the way through the shape. Now as I come back to color things, here is the little trick. I am going to click on my black arrow. I'm going to deselect. Then I can come back and then color things. So if things are overlapping and you got some random shapes, notice that I could combine lines, by the way. Then I could bring those together. Now this is going to be just blocking in kind of lights and darks for right now. Then we are going to come back in and add on our, our gradients. And that's going to kind of round things out a little bit. So right now, let's do this. I'm going to grab this shoulder. I'm going to grab his apron right here. Let's... Just seeing what I want to do first. I think I just want to do those three. That looks good. When I click on the knife, the shapes that you want should actually pop up. And what we're going to look to do is basically do a nice cast shadow from the head. So I deselect, black arrow, deselect. The thing that most people don't remember is that deselect. And then all I do is just keep going up one per per shape. This one might need to go up a little bit more. I'm going to grab those two, same thing. Kind of go right underneath that chin. Deselect. You can also go eyedropper. I'm going to grab this guy's hand. I think we're going to go right under that handle. So notice I'm grabbing the shape first with that black arrow. Go right into that finger. I should deselect, and I should be able to just grab that. Now, if for some reason, you can't grab that shape if it's grabbing everything. If you zoom in, typically what happens is you don't go all the way through the shape. So I usually try and be as deliberate as I can to go all the way through the shapes. I'm going to go right towards that little tooth. So now I'm going to grab the tooth, and it's going to be like the lip. It's casting a little bit of a shadow on that tooth. Deselect. Come on back. I'm going to grab both of these eyeballs. I'm going to try and do it with the knife tool, but we'll see. Maybe I need to, uh, maybe we'll use some Pathfinder. I think we'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is basically go, that eyebrow is going to cast a little bit of a shadow. This eyebrow is going to cast a little bit of a shadow. Notice that I'm going along and I'm trying to round it out as best as possible. Deselect, come on back. And a lot of these things we might up them. So on this layer, sometimes we actually go a little bit darker with the shadows since we're going to be adding on a transparent gradient back on top of it. Sometimes adding it a little bit dark will actually look a little nicer. All right, I'm going to grab all of the face. That's going to be light, so I want to cast shadow under the nose. So I'm going to go right into that lip. I'm just going to round that out, by the way. And I'm going to go on this far side of the face. I'm going to go right down. 
almost by the side of his mouth. Good. I'm going to go right by his chin. Now, right now, I want it to be underneath this nose. And you might be able to see that it's going to flow in and color in everything. So I could either do it and then come back. Or since I already see it, I'm basically going to give it a stopping point. So I want that cash shadow to start underneath the nose. I'm going to swoop it around. I'm going to do one other little one right through here. And I think we're good with those shadows. All right. So I deselected right there. And now we're just holding down shift. I'm grabbing all my little random shapes. Cast shadow. Ooh, let's do one for the tongue. Again, this will soften quite a bit. So that back part of the tongue, I want a little bit darker. Control zero. This side of it is going to be nice and light. I want it to be a cast shadow underneath this arm. We're going to do one more for the kind of the, the hand here. And then I think we're going to be good with this step. So here we go. So I have my black arrow. I'm going to grab both of the shapes. So I just noticed that it's separated. So anytime that the lines are close, usually that, that live paint will break them up in the, the shape. So just hold on shift if that happens. If you want to get fancy, you could always unite them. I'm actually going to grab this little guy over here. So I'm just grabbing that arm, by the way. The reasons for that, I'm going to start with his armpit. And I'm just going to do a nice swoop. I'm going to start in this armpit. Swoop. So all that will get darker. So I'm going to go up one, dark. I say his hand is going to get dark there. So I'm just recoloring the apron a little bit. I'm just doing a little bit more of an off-white. Just so it stands out. All right, little boogie check. I think we are probably good. I'm going to zoom in on that finger. So this will be like the lights coming in around him. So that's going to get dark. But right now, I say that's good. If I wanted to get picky, I might bring this shadow into his armpit a little bit more. But I say we are good. So I'm going to go file save. Whenever we do the complicated ones, we try and make our lives a little bit easier. So things that you could do. So if you want to start getting picky, anytime it's bumpy, you can come back in. This is just a big shape right now. So you can come back in and edit any one of these paths. You can smooth them out. So that is an option. We are not going to be that picky today. Now, I'm going to hide this Pathfinder. Now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take our shadow layer. I am going to lock it out. We are going to unlock our gradient. And then it's all going to disappear. So just be aware of that. So what we are looking for is just big, solid shapes. And we're going to add in our transparent gradients to those major shapes first. So what we want to do is I am on my gradient. I can hide that. I'm going to be using my magic wand tool. So let's do, oh, let's do these sleeves first. So notice that I select. I'm double checking that just the sleeves are selected. If you're grabbing more, especially in that apron, just double check, double click, see if your tolerance is at the default. Usually it's like 32. All right. So we have one, it looks like two, three shapes. So when I click on our gradient, usually I can just click on it. And you should see, hey, is it too many shapes or not? Now, what I think I want to do is this arm looks okay to me. But what I might want to do is just grab these two and make these a compound path. So that sounds complicated. All it is is I'm going up to the top to object. I'm dropping down. And then I'm going to click on make. And if you just look underneath his face, that gradient's going to go. And it's just one big shape right now. So it's going to be a little bit easier to control. As we do this, so if I grab both of these, let's just click on our gradient tool. And what I'm looking to do is say, hey, I want it from that direction. I want this one. That direction. 
And we are not going to keep them in this, but we're basically trying to flow the light source a little bit. So I'm going to double click on this dark one. I'm totally blanking on what our color was. Okay, so we're going to do our dark. Now I want this one, we're going to start at 60%. And you're going to notice as we start adding back in the transparency, that those shadows that we just created are going to pop through from the layer underneath. I'm going to click on this white layer, double click. Now I might just do a cream. It really just depends on how spooky you're wanting them. So the more highlights are going to pop through, obviously it's going to be a brighter character. So if you want them to be really, really dark, you don't necessarily need to do that. Now I'm going to drop this down to 20. And what we're looking for is how much of these shadows are popping through. So you can kind of see the more contrast we had on the layer below will pop through more and or less. You can always keep increasing this until you're happy. So this is just player's choice. I think I like that. Now I'm going to come back through. I'm going to select it again. And what I'm first looking for is, is it going in the right direction? I'm actually just going to unite these since they're touching. Find our gradient. Just double click. And I'm actually going to keep that light one the same. I'm okay with that. Good. Now while we still have that one selected, I'm going to grab our knife. Let's grab it. I'm going to come over to my gradient tool. And I just want to... to go kind of in the same same angle. Now while I still have this gradient, what I'm going to do is, let's just zoom in so you can see the, the method here. I am going to grab my eyeball. Good. Now I am going to go onto eyedropper. It should just come back and grab it. Now I do want these to be radial. That's good. I am pretty okay with that. The only thing I would say is it's just not going in the direction I want. So I'm going to take our highlights and I'm just going to bring them over and then I can adjust. Just go nice and smooth. Notice that I didn't, I'm still on the gradient tool. I'm going to bring that one down a tiny bit. And I just want to double check that corner to make sure it's not getting any kind of a weird edge. If you like that, go for it. And you can always adjust how bright, how dark. And that's going to let that other shadow pop through. All right, so let's do the doozy. So let's do our face first, and then we'll come back in and pop in kind of our lights and our darks. So what I want to double check first is, is it grabbing all of my pieces? Let's just check it. Hold down shift, grab that nose, do it again. All right, so it's basically grabbing everything, so that's what I want. So let's do a compound path. So I'm going to go object, compound path, make. And I am going to, let's just unite some of these. I basically was looking at underneath the nose. That was me just getting picky on you. So under our gradients, let's start double clicking. Now, if you like it being dark like that, keep it, have some fun with it. So I'm going to go dark green. I don't want it to be that bright. So if you want it to be a little bit brighter, I would go right there with it. Before we click off, I'm going to click on my gradient tool. I just want it to go in the same direction. Now you can play around with how far over it's going to go. Control zero. And we'll pop back in these. We'll, we'll still do the tongue, but while we have it selected, I want to object, make this a compound path, make. I'm going to click on I, which is my eyedropper. Just click anywhere on the face, and that should pop right back in. Click on your gradient tool. And I say right at the top is going to be where our highlight's going to be. Notice that if I hang out, it'll drop down. Looks pretty good. Let's grab these two shapes. And I'm going to do the same thing. That compound path will just pre prevent it from getting really 
weird gradients. So it'll look really abrupt and a little bit more awkward if you if you keep it. Let's just say that's going to hit this front and then it's just going to get darker as we go back. If you wanted to hit that extra little t finger, go for it. Ooh, we are we are just spot checking right now, guys. This is looking pretty good. Let's grab our tongue. I am doing radial, so I'm just going full dark with that. Let's zoom in. I'm just grabbing our gradients. And I'm just moving this over so it's a little bit closer to the light source, that's all. Good, control zero. All right, hard stuff is definitely over. File, save. We are just doing some background stuff right now. So what I might say to do is let's do a real simple one on the background and then we'll call it a day. So I'm going to lock out this. We've done all of our hard work. I'm going to come back to this layer and I might actually do the one above it. Let's do this one. So I'm going to take my brushes expand. This should be the one that's got all of our color on it. And I'm going to duplicate this out. And why we're going to do this is it's going to make sense in two seconds. I'm going to select everything. And I'm basically looking just for a silhouette. So I want to unite all of that. If I go Shift B, what I'm looking for is just to see if there's any random strays floating in the middle here. Now, if we add on, I'm just going to go blue for right now. That's not the color we're going to go for. But if you keep on adding, what might happen is we're looking for stray little lines that are going to really mess them up. So if I do outside, you're going to notice real quick if you got little spikes. So that is what we are looking for. Now if I click on R, there's our little culprit. So I'm going to go Shift C. And then I can just adjust it to where I think I need it. I can also go minus. So I'm just deleting some of these extra little points. Alrighty. Now I don't, obviously don't want silly blue. Now notice that I have the align stroke to the outside. So it's just pumping it out. Good. And I might go up to 10. And what I'm looking for is that I'm going to fill in this little blob. And I'm going to fill in these little guys too. Shift B. I just want to fill in. So Shift B is our blob brush, by the way. Just double check that you have it selected. And I'm just filling in these little holes. So I just have that kind of outside shape, that's all. Now we're going to do one last thing. We're going to do a background rectangle. So I'm just going to go up to the top and we can always scale it later. I'm going to go control zero. Let's go minus minus. I'm going to make it a little bit big. And I'm going to go with our darkest color here. All right, method behind the madness. I am going to go arrange, send to back. So that outside shape is basically going to pop it out. Now I can keep it this dark. That doesn't bother me too much. Looking good. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to slap that over here because we are done. Done and done. File, save. You guys did it. So on the final, I might be adjusting this background a tiny bit more. You guys did the... If you guys went all the way through this one, this one was a toughie. So whenever we are doing the tougher tutorials, if you guys are following along, definitely let me know. Uh, I know that there are a lot more requests for the beginner ones. And it's always good, especially if you're a beginner, to be testing some, some harder ones out. I think it's a definitely uh, worth your time to just kind of push yourself, see if, it, uh, if you can get all the way through it. Since we go step by step, most of the challenging stuff is just taking the time to go through the steps uh, and especially as you are working in all of your mouse skills and clicking skills, uh, it'll definitely come out. So definitely put in comments, hey, I finished it. And if you are liking the channel, definitely subscribe. Definitely let me know what you're struggling with and or what you would like to see more tutorials on. So right now I'm getting a bunch on Pathfinder. So that is what a lot of the newer stuff is going to be focusing on. So if you have anything other than Pathfinder or uh, some more cartoon tutorials, uh, definitely put those in and I can either put it in a step-by-step -step tutorial 
and or more of our uh, just the tips. So thanks for hanging out and I will see you on the next tutorial.